So I'm very lucky to be joined by Tom Duthie, who is currently a script editor at Disney and its many subsidiaries like Marvel and Lucasfilm. So thank you very, very much for joining me, Tom. Thank you. So you've had an awful lot of experience in the film and TV industry, um, starting in the costume department at Warner Bros, production assistant at Fox, and now working your way up to some pretty high level projects at Star Wars and Marvel. So before we begin, as you just told me, maybe tell our viewers about how you first got into the industry. I uh, became friends with someone who was currently working in uh, in the costume department. Um, I didn't really know what project was until I got there. And then it turned out it was Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Uh, I did a few more projects in the costume department. I moved into production after that. Worked on Death on the Nile. The Sandman, which has just come out recently, doing very well, actually. I moved on to Andor, where, where it was called Pilgrim at the time. Kind of a completion of a childhood dream um, in working on a Star Wars. I understand, uh, yeah. Show. A PA on that, I kind of then started assisting script editor. From there, I went on to be a, a, be a script editor for um, Marvel on... It was essentially Captain Marvel 2, but it's called The Marvels, and it, there's no trailer out for it yet can't really say all that much about it to be honest but i, I would um... be very happy to be in your position <laughs> for sure yeah. like you say a childhood dream okay moving on to the scholarship itself then lgbtq representation in tv is improving very very quickly for example disney productions like love victor loki and the owl house demonstrated very progressive lgbtq representation all of them are in the last couple of years so where do you think LGBTQ representation in TV stands today? And do you think Disney is doing enough in its TV portfolio in particular? I would say that uh, in things like Loki, you're getting a lot more uh, representation. And as the writers seem to be getting younger and more diverse, you you definitely are getting more characters who seemingly identify as LGBTQ. But I think the BBC probably is doing more in that they've, they, they have more shows specifically about the LGBT characters. I think that it, they could be moving a little bit faster. I mean, Disney recently came out and said that they want to massively increase um, LGBT representation. I think they said something like they want 50% of characters in the future in any film or TV production to be of some minority. So mm -hmm. um, they've been talking the talk, but whether they translate that into actions um, remains yeah. to be seen. But also in, from the film side of Disney in particular, again, recently things have been improving very, very quickly. We've seen that in Eternals, Lightyear. So from the film side um, of Disney, do you think that's a bit better or is it even worse than the TV side? I think it has been better, but particularly in, in Lightyear, I thought that was uh, quite bold of them. In the big blockbusters, they still bend to censorship, um, particularly in more fundamentalist countries like Saudi Arabia. Fundamentally, that's up to the distributors in that country and there's not a lot they can do about it. They seem to be taking the right steps in film and but we will probably see it happen more quickly in television just because more content is being made um, mm. on the small screen at the moment. Also, you're, you're working with quite a few more writers. Writers tend to be the drivers of this, whereas producers in the studio tend to be kind of the gatekeepers. Uh, it seems to be the writers often who are pushing to have, have better representation. From early on, I think now that it's been acknowledged on both sides, there will be a concerted effort. You mentioned the cutting out of certain scenes in order to sell these shows to more conservative markets like Saudi Arabia. <clears throat> Do you think, obviously, Disney inherently needs to make money, and if they can't sell these programs to Saudi Arabia, they're not making any money. So do you think it's acceptable for Disney to cut out these same-sex scenes it's a product like you said if you need to, to change your product to suit another market that's fair enough but i suppose if it goes too much the other direction it starts influencing the creative process even before you've made the film that's when it becomes a problem i think i think you make the film uh, diverse and representative in the way that you want it at first if the product is is truly representative and diverse, it will be throughout. It won't be just tokenistic single scenes. It will be main characters who are who are 
part of the LGBTQ community. It will become probably become more of an issue as we go on, especially if more conservative markets put their foot down about that sort of thing. Yeah, you mentioned exactly. more kind of tokenistic areas. I think Loki may have had an element of that. I think, you know, explicit <laughs> LGBTQ content, it was just kind of Loki having a very short conversation with um, the woman, I've forgotten her name, Sylvie, I believe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So in that respect, um, I think it's quite common the LGBTQ representation film and TV it's often limited to a few seconds as a token gesture. So as a writer yourself, how would you approach including LGBTQ representation in a narrative? And what approach should Disney be taking? Are they taking the incorrect one? The thing to do is to employ writers who are part of the LGBTQ community and to have actors who are part of that community as well playing the roles that represent their community in order to understand their stories, in order to be able to create characters who accurately represent their own narrative. Mm -hmm. You mentioned actors play LGBTQ people um, yeah. there's a train of thought that in order for there to be a gay character you should have a gay actor playing that character or whatever yeah. minority it is um, but then again actors are meant to become somebody they're not first and foremost you should be considering a person who is who, who potentially is closer to that role I do think it is important in terms of that person being an authority of their own experience uh, for them to at least have have some understanding, I do agree that a sort of a good enough actor will be able to inhabit that that role. Fundamentally, should still be a meritocracy, and um, I don't believe that kind of tick box inclusion is really the way forward. I think a good example of that is um, Eddie Redmayne. I've forgotten the film, but he played a the Danish girl. Yes, he played a transgender yeah. character and he got very, very good reviews and is meant to be very authentic and everything. Mm-hmm. And then recently he said that he wishes that he didn't take that part all the mm-hmm. years ago because he feels like, you know, he he didn't do it justice. LGBTQ representation in film and TV has increased to 11.9% of all US characters on broadcast TV. They identified mm-hmm. as LGBTQ in 2022. Um, I thought that was quite a big number, 11.9%, and that was research compiled by GLAD. What do you think is the driving force behind this change, um, and do you think we're going to see more of it? You see more and more um, Gen Z uh, group identifying as either queer or a part of the LGBT community. Content will have to change to reflect that. A lot of the big companies kind of get get a, a lot of pushback from from kind of the the so-called uh, like woke agenda or whatever because they're such a massive company they are kind of gatekeepers of popular culture as gatekeepers of popular culture you must represent the views and needs of your audience and as the political situation changes you will need to reflect that however it is also an entertainment industry there has to be a line between where you're entertaining and where you're informing people often that line gets crossed and in a good way like what you know you get the moral message of of the story sometimes that means that you don't necessarily engage as politically with the world as you'd like to the messages are more subtle but then i guess if, even in something like star wars there's always been a revolutionary kind of rebellious mindset within that sometimes it's too on the nose when they when they deal with it and sometimes it's not enough i wouldn't say they try and make too many political moves uh disney i think they go for more entertaining heartfelt everybody's included stories it's a great message but i think sometimes you will get more powerful messages from independent film yeah. and where there is less so-called censorship or a house style. A recent survey said that 20.9% of Generation Z identified as LGBTQ and my interview with Rich Ferraro of GLAD, he said essentially it is marketing for these um, studios and production companies. If they include LGBTQ characters in their film and TV, they're essentially going to interest quite a big demographic of younger people. They want to capture the younger audience. So rarely it makes financial and marketing sense, I would mm-hmm. think. If- Traditionally made children's films, and at what point in childhood do you start thinking about sexuality in a complex way? Mm -hmm. That's a big issue, and I think something that a lot of parents are uncomfortable with. In my last interview with the BBC creative Ollie Wiggins, who also worked at Disney, they released Andy Mac, which was aimed at 
six to 14 year olds and that had the first oh. gay main character in i was reading some news reports and there were as you say a lot of disgruntled parents um mm-hmm. saying that it was their right to introduce these issues to their children so you're very correct disney has been in the news recently for their um handling of lgbtq issues so in march 2022 the so-called don't say gay bill was passed in florida courts and this bill prohibits uh, discussions of sexuality and gender at american or florida schools and disney took a very long time weeks to condemn this bill and that led to thousands of walkouts from staff um a public backlash political repercussions Uh, Disney lost or may lose some of their tax benefits um, and quite a large share price fall also coincided with those events. So it's kind of caught Disney off guard. Do you think Disney took the right decisions? Um, They took quite a long time to condemn this bill, but one could argue, is it really Disney's place to comment on political issues? They're an entertainment company. Should they really be getting involved in such things? In any big corporation, you tend to try not, at least in the first instance, to not stick their foot into things like this. In the age of increasing invisibility due to, to social media, it has become more important for big companies like this to speak out against kind of ridiculous, regressive laws. The fact that it took so long to comment on this is a bad thing, but Disney World is in Florida. I'm sure there's certain tax breaks that they're getting there. It's a complicated issue. America's extraordinarily divided at the minute. If you've got 50% of the country who are very liberal or progressive and 50% of the country who are um, right-wing conservatives, it's even more of a difficult marketing decision to uh, kind of jump on a so-called bandwagon. Personally, someone's kind of sexual identity is should not be entangled in how you think that a country should be run. The country is about independence and about kind of forging your own way. And if you can't forge your own kind of sexual identity without influence of government then what is your nation built on generally disney were regarded as quite progressive in all forms of representation so i wonder if now this problem is going to bite them for quite a while but after this um trouble they have essentially rebranded all their diversity and inclusion schemes they are essentially trying to right their wrongs in that regard So um, a little survey I did for my own project, it was weighted towards a younger demographic. It was mostly my course mates, around 19 years old. And 71% agreed that Disney was moderately or extremely inclusive towards LGBTQ representation. However, Disney was ranked last with 3% of votes when compared to the LGBTQ representation of Netflix at 65%, ITV at 22%, and BBC at 10%. So in your time at Disney, do you think these results are to be expected? And do you think respondents may rank Disney higher in the future, maybe after they've had a chance to um, improve their representation like they say they're going to be doing? Uh, such a big company like Disney, obviously they, they've got an enormous production budget and they're making a, a huge amount of content. Yeah. A lot of that is legacy content. So they're dealing with previous characters who... who you know, may not have been representative of LGBT communities before. They have mainly doing feature films. Netflix and the BBC have had a certain, a bit more agility in that they've been able to do TV. And I think the change happens much quicker in TV, mainly because writers have a lot more time to respond to uh, political changes in the world. Really big budget films and animations take a lot longer to make. When there's huge amounts of money like that, there are those people make marketing decisions based on that. And sometimes those can be exclusionary. Mm -hmm. The studio pressure will will tend to err on the side of safety in creative terms and political terms. And so there's probably quite a lot of dinosaur-like attitudes Mm -hmm. Uh, just lingering in the background, perhaps. That makes sense. And you say it's a marketing decision sometimes Mm. to limit LGBTQ representation in films. And we saw recently with Lightyear, there was um, a very, very good same-sex relationship. But at the same time, uh, Lightyear was a bit of a commercial flop and critical flop. Um, And that may have been for a diverse array of reasons, uh, maybe a lack of marketing, or maybe there was too much competition at the box office. But do you think because it was a children's film animation and it did have very prominent 
LGBTQ themes. Do you think that may have had a uh, contributing factor to its failure? It wasn't a failure in, for that reason. I think it was a failure in story terms and also because they didn't feel that it had enough to do with the Toy Story universe. The script and the story is, is the heart of the film. If you don't get that right and you don't make the right creative decisions in the first instance, then I think you're going to be stuck yeah. with a uh, very expensive, shiny mistake hollow toy <laughs> um yes essentially i think it's very very bold what they what they did with that same sex relationship i don't think that the backlash was to do with that i think it's to do with the changing nature of streaming the relationship between the big and the small screen when you spend that amount of money on a project you need to make huge returns the value of that it goes into disney plus already on there i believe very quickly and i mean i do hope that it wasn't a backlash as a result of the same-sex relationship there's a large enough progressive market for it to succeed in spite of that just to end with your personal experiences working for disney on scripts and all the rest of it what have your thoughts towards representation been in the industry have you seen things get better personally recently actors and representation in stories things have been getting a lot better however there is certainly a inclusivity problem within film crews skills being passed down through families nepotism which is still a very big problem not so much in office stuff, although I know production offices can, can generally be predominantly white. A lot of technical crew will be predominantly white and male and cisgender. It's a difficult thing to change because people are always struggling to get crew members, so they can't actually necessarily be picky or as inclusive as they like to. They just use people who are there or who have worked for them for a long time. There's a few really good training programs, um, screen skills being one of them. I don't think it's meeting the demand. Yeah, as you say, I think there are a lot of diverse skills um, training programs out there, like screen skills and National Film and TV School, um, even the BBC, mm. lots of apprenticeships, ITV, Sky, and placements and all the rest mm -hmm. of it. But I think the, the number of placements or apprenticeships on offer is very comparatively small as to what is needed in the industry. So definitely, I think those numbers just need to go up. Absolutely. And that will be down to government investment mm. and um, arts funding, which mm -hmm. um, has just suffered massively over the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. One final question. Obviously, I've always been a very big Star Wars fan, and I'm sure yourself has as well. Mm -hmm. and you mentioned you were just working on Andor. Um, there's been yeah. a lot of Star Wars projects since the Disney takeover. Films and especially TV now on Disney Plus originals. But there hasn't been... Barely any LGBTQ representation at all in Star Wars. In the last, mm -hmm. in Rise of Skywalker, Episode Nine, there was a very small same-sex kiss, like way off in the background for a split second. Yeah. In Marvel, it's been a lot better, especially recently. But do you think um, things will change in Star Wars because it it does seem like it's you know very much stuck in the past at the moment? The problem is that it's it is such a legacy product it's not really about romance in in the sense mm -hmm. in that sense i mean there's two romantic relationships in the whole star wars series with between han and leia and anakin and um lots, yeah. lots of others which main viewers may not know about but yes yeah. exactly. you're right they're the main they're, the, they're sort of main romantic um things and i think uh it's specifically male specifically mm -hmm. action and kind of violence based I mean, obviously, there's a there's a great spiritual element with with the Jedi's and kind of finding your inner peace and listening to your ancestors or whatever. It seems ridiculous that you can have aliens of all different <laughs> different types, but they won't put a gay character in yeah. there. I think also maybe the problem comes that, as you say, Star Wars is such a legacy brand, and <laughs> it is targeted at kids and kids are the main demographic but you also have the 60 year olds original trilogy purists who turn up for everything star wars and yeah. they may be very traditionally minded and they may not want to stray from their prized view of what star wars is um and the types of people and the types of relationships they want to see in star wars so i think maybe that has something to do with it as well absolutely but yeah, I mean, I've also like read all the Star Wars books and comics, and there's a lot more representation in them, but arguably they're more specialized media, so that may not filter down into the film and TV yet. 
yeah, the extended universe has always been a lot more progressive and kind of bolder in the types of stories they're telling mm, as well. Definitely. Which yeah. I think which I think that they've sort of in the feature films they kind of neglect it a little bit. Mm-hmm. They do they do very much rely on the past. Yeah. A lot of the time. Especially in the sequels. Which we which um has the groundbreaking romance between Ray and Kylo Ren, romance of the century. Yes. <laughs> Uh, exactly. But it was good in some ways. Well, I'm sure Andor will fix all of the wrongs. Of- I'm hoping so. It looks it looks pretty good, mm-hmm. and I enjoyed working on the script. It's 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 a uh, it's a different take. Well, thank you very much for joining me, Tom. Um, and I hope yeah, the viewers enjoyed. You. Yeah.